Oh my god, that's my Gino! <laughs> so welcome to our Around the World Boat Tour series. This is the second boat of many. We're so excited to show you some of the most unique, beautiful vessels that there are on planet Earth. We're on Fujin. She's a seven ton vessel. She's for sale. I'm so unbelievably stoked to be on board at the moment. We're in the Chesapeake Bay too, which is a pretty special spot. There's a pirate festival going on, but lots of fun things are happening. This at is the where we left on our fateful North Atlantic crossing. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of thoughts about that have been coming back. Join us for a speedy sail, a boat tour. And we even call this boat home for a night on anchor, where we're really able to test out what it would be like to live on a boat like this. It was Mommy poo-poo. Oh yeah, you need a poo-poo? Yeah. Okay, thanks for telling me. Can you just finish talking about your poo-poo, Darwin, and I'll finish speaking to everyone? <laughs> okay, he's hunched over now. <laughs> he should be there a while. First thing that our audience should understand here is Elaine is filming, it's very early in the morning and that means she's in a great mood, which means that we must have slept well last night, which is very rare for us lately because we flew from Australia to LA to now Norfolk. We are unbelievably jet lagged. Come on mate, you need to wake up. I've done some single handed sailing where I was forced to stay awake for most of 72 hours or more. Hey mate, you need to wake up. And that, what I've just done with the kids was as hard as anything I've ever had to do. Before. Yeah. So yeah, it's been really, really freaking difficult to tell you the truth. But today's the first day we've woken up feeling good. We've slept kind of at the normal time. You know those parents with the crazy kids at the airport? That was that was certainly us. And they've like given up. Yeah. I never thought I would be that parent. Darwin is nuts, man. He's like pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> One lady was going shh for the trip. And like, they were actually the, really good. Like, for they the were trip. really good, like so well behaved, all things considered. I couldn't get to the bottom of exactly who it was. Every time Darwin would cry, which wasn't often, I'd stand up and be like, looking around, waiting for the shush. Trying to because... find out who it was. <laughs> It was really rude. So to be clear, I've been on the other end of that when kids are crying and it's really annoying. Our kids were being angels at the time for that flight. They were amazing. Mm, yeah. And we still got grief from whoever it was. I think I know who it was. But, uh, but I can't be sure. And we're about to go see the boat for the first time. We're just gonna go stop off at this coffee shop called Ficker, which reminds me of our mate Kai, who was always talking about Ficker. There is a low on our heads right now, so it's bloody freezing here. I mean, it's not freezing. Definitely, <laughs> we're not in Bali anymore. I have to film this. Can Hi. I film you? I've never had a pirate say I, this. It's so exciting. I was like, oh, that guy can't. No. No. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice to meet you. Hey. My name's Randy. Hey, How's Randy. it going? Hey. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Pleasure. Hey, nice Jeff, to meet hey, you. Nice to meet you. Darwin, these guys are pirates. <laughs> yeah. So it's the Black Beard Hampton Festival, is that what it's called? We're gonna come back tonight, they're open till 6 p.m. But for now, we're just gonna head back to the hotel, grab our camera gear, because we are going sailing. Oh my God. They're evil looking dagger boards. Whoa, what on earth? <laughs> that is so sick. This is Fuja. She's a Beaker 53 foot racing cat, and you're not going to believe the history of this vessel, which we'll touch on later. After an extremely adventurous life so far, she's ready for new owners and is currently for sale at $1.4 million. Sick. We're just about to board. I have only seen the outside. It looks amazing. So cool. Very shiny, very clean. Just jumping in here to share with you today's sponsor, which we are so, so proud of and couldn't rate highly enough because it has helped me personally so much. Uh, and that is better help. What a time to be alive where seeing a therapist is considered cool, sexy even, and progressive. If there's anything interfering with your happiness and if there's something stopping you from achieving your goals, I think why not give therapy a go? It's really helped me get through some rough patches of anxiety in particular. Yes, anyway, um, in love with my therapist. She is amazing. I can message her anytime. It's so nice to know that I have someone there who cares about me that's so easily accessible. So. Let's talk about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is actually more affordable than in-office therapy and more convenient. How cool is that? They have so much scheduling flexibility. 
it really works for mine and Riley's life, which is all over the place. Finding a therapist is so easy and fun. It's kind of like dating. If you don't love the first therapist you match with, you can try again. You're able to easily switch therapists for free without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. It's super smooth. To get started, all you have to do is answer a few questions about your needs and your preferences in therapy, and BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist. You can talk to your therapist however you want. You can do voice call, video call, text messages. Now, if you've been meaning to do this for yourself, now is your moment, because BetterHelp are gonna give you 10% off your first month. You can use our link just here. I'll also pop it in the description box below, betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. Thank you again so much to BetterHelp for supporting this video, for supporting me, <laughs> All right, on with the sailing. We're on board with Mike today and Nils. Uh, Mike, how long have you been on board for? Since 2015. This is your baby, oh, hey? You know yeah, every kinda. square inch. I do. This area here is yeah. massive, Elena. Massive. But you're only allowed to say the word massive once. Okay, I'm only allowed to say massive once. There's a tarpaulin up here, which is good. How long does it take to rig this up? Okay, nice. Wow, two is very quick. I love the removable coach roof. When you're sailing, you get rid of it, and then when you're on anchor, you just stick it up quickly. I just love how open it all is. You can just walk around everywhere. Come and have a look. Wow. Stunning saloon, love these colors. I love what they've done with the carbon bench top here. We were nearly gonna go with carbon bench top in our Rapido, but I love how they've weaved the brown in. Just going down below here on the port side. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting the accommodation to be this big. Once I get inside the saloon, which is where you spend 90% of your time, that would give me more of an idea if a family could hang out on there for a long time. I'm positive that, that it would be fine. This bathroom, this is also big. A lot of stuff on board, you'll see they're really trying to keep the boat very, very light. Every decision has been, has a reason behind it and it's very purposeful. For example, by the aft head here. Hey Darwin. Hey, down, 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 down. You going down? No. This here, they decided not to cover because it's just extra weight and it's unnecessary. I also like having pipes a little bit exposed or at least easy to access because if it's leaking or something falls off, you can see it straight away. I, like, I, I really love it. I, honestly, I would prefer to have pipes all going along one access way that you could just easily pull the lid off and just have a look down. That would be the way that I would design it. Babe, I love this boat. Awesome. I absolutely so awesome. love this boat. Mommy, I don't like this boat. <laughs> I don't like this boat. You don't? The tramps aren't bouncy. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is sea deck, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Sea deck. Yes. And yeah. it's very comfortable underfoot. It, I quite like it. It's brilliant to have. You don't really need to be wearing shoes. It's not hard. It seems like a small thing, but not having to wear shoes on your boat outside, it's just, it's, it adds a level of comfort. We're about to cast off the lines and go sailing. Are you moving my camera? I'll just stop. <laughs> and it's chaos. <laughs> and then press this one. This is his favorite thing to do. Woo! Good do job. One? We got one more. One more. We wanted to get Fujin up and moving in the strong winds we had this morning. So stick around for the nice, proper boat tour later. Not the easiest spot to manoeuvre out of. This boat should definitely be on the end of a dock, like on the T, but uh, <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, we're gonna get data. We've just come out of the inlet and we're heading out into the bay here. We're about to hoist the main, so Mike's gonna walk me through that. Pretty rough, but we wanted that this morning because we wanna be able to go 20 knots today. This boat's built for heavier weather. It really performs well in 2025. 20, There's almost no other boats that can beat it at 22 plus knots. It's an absolute weapon. What's the true wind speed, Neil? 16, so we're gonna be close to seeing what she can do. They're gonna be really disappointed and I'm gonna be just losing my mind. So as you could have guessed, I'm on mama duties today mostly, but I'll be trying to get outside as much as I can because I really wanna be a part of this. I'm like super inspired. Good sleep makes a world of difference. I'm back on top of it again and just super happy to be sailing. I'm really looking forward to going around the world and seeing all these different boats, meeting amazing people. It's gonna be good. We're gonna go fast? Yeah. I'm hoisting the name with my left toe. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Oh, 
flying fast. Jeez. Keep going. Is the engine still on? No. We're doing nine knots under just May. Now we're going to put the jib up. The problem is there's a bridge down here that's only nine nautical miles away, so we don't really have enough room. We're going to have to be tacking in about 20 minutes. We're 16 knots now. That was so quick. Yeah, it like, it jumps. My immediate thoughts are that this boat is so smooth. We were just going 16 knots. We just put the boards down, so we're about to go faster, but like, it feels really nice in the water. Darwin is asleep right now, and I'm pretty sure we're about to fly a hull. <laughs> flying a hole now. Is that right, Mike? Absolutely. <laughs> we are hooning at 17 knots. What are we now? Uh, we we um, just did 18 and a half before. <laughs> so this really is one of the most unique and cool multi holes in the world. Very, very blessed to be on board at the moment. We hoisted the main in about 35 seconds and it's just incredible to be out here at the moment doing between 14 and 18 knots and in two hours time we've gone all the way to the bridge and back. We'll be back on dry land like nothing ever happened. What's nice is if railing gets too crazy all I have to do is sit here in the dry and I can just let go of this and the boat will stop. And it's pretty dry there, yeah? Oh yeah, nice and dry. Just sit here, watch the world go by yeah. while they get drenched out there. 20 knots! <laughs> 20.8! Oh my god! Flying in the hull. It was a little bit chaotic, but like it's uh, really, really smooth for how fast we're going. So the reason she is so smooth under sail, even with these choppy waves, is because there are T foils on the rudders, and that stops it from bouncing forward. So I'm not feeling seasick at all right now. You got very wet. Yeah. Is the jacket still waterproof? How's yeah. it holding up? One and only design ever made. <laughs> Push him out of the way, Pant. Get aggressive. The average speed for 45 seconds was 20 and a half. Max speed 21.6. So good steady speed. And what was the wind? It was uh, 17 knots of breeze. I'm glad we got that fast sail in with that those winds because the wind is really dropping off and we might not have been able to get to experience that. So today was a huge success. We're about to take the boys out to this pirate festival. They're best be nice and neat. But never once in the employ of these holy men Did I ever once turn my mind from the thought of revenge our nice proper boat tour. Greg Slingstad, who's a West Coast tech dude, employed the services of Paul Beaker to design this boat. Paul Beaker is a notoriously difficult to work with naval architect, marine engineer, and a bit of a, like a delicate genius who's equally as good as the big players in the league, like Eminem and VPLP, who are very famous boat designers in the multi-hull world. Beaker wants to design boats his way. Slingstad agreed to give him funding and the creative room to create sort of whatever he wanted, and that's how we ended up with the Beaker 53, a boat that I think genuinely is one of, if not, the coolest boat in the entire world. Elaine is going to be doing the tour of the inside. I'm going to be doing the outside, starting with the electric winches. There's actually some hydraulics on board. So this is controlling the Cunningham and the Longeron. That's for the tack lines. We have some more electric winches here. That's slow, and then you click that in. 
and that rips the mainsail up so fast. Here we've got a Lorimer carbon fiber mast and burn. This boat is super fast, so these sea foils here really help lift the hulls up out of the water. They're really effective. The other thing that's providing lift are the T-foil rudders here. So we've got two of them at the back here. It helps it maintain stability, so it'll stop rocking and also provides a little bit of lift as well. So because we're here in the United States, we're gonna be using Freedom Units. So this boat is 53 feet long, 26 feet wide. The mast is 75 foot high and the draft is three feet. We've got 800 watts. Of, I feel like Spider-Man here at the moment. These solar panels here are about 800 watts. They're flat and very, very light. I'm told by the captain that that is enough to power Mike. You, we can run the air conditioner off these? Yeah, we can't run the air conditioner, but we can run the rest of the boat off of it, no problem. You don't have a generator on board, but no, you do no, have no. an aircon. Yeah. How are you managing that? Um, nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have two engines and the alternators output almost 200 amps each at 24 volts. The air conditioner only uses 15 amps, so it can go pretty well. And the aircon only weighs 20 kilos, just quietly considering for the rapid totally because, yeah. yeah. Not even a question. I do think that's a good idea. And last night I used it for heat, to put it that way. We got one that does heat yeah, and yeah. air. Yeah, totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got the helm here. It's mirrored on the other side, straight down to the T-foils with a bar that goes across. B&G electrics, very easy to handle here. It's kind of good to be able to run from side to side. These are your throttles for your engine. This is all fairly normal. Comfortable seat. This was an afterthought. One thing about this boat is it actually is quite wet because it is so fast and because of the bows. That would be the only thing that I would say about this boat. Something to be noted by a prospective buyer. Just like on our old Ultramer, Fujin has two of these 30 horsepower Yanmar diesel engines. So I'm just looking at how how this area here is so strong. This is a, a custom carbon Longeron. That is just crazy. Steady, stable and strong and stiff. There's a huge selection of sails. They're all North 3DI. It's got the full race kit. There's quite a few other things about this boat that are more standard. Like the dinghy here. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Another thing that's different is you do leave the accommodation. So it's a pod catamaran which means you're gonna leave the accommodation here to go outside and then, so the rooms are separate. I'm sure that would really suit some people, but some people might not like that. Honestly, I love it. The space that that gets you in the end is really awesome. The saloon is where you would spend a huge amount of time. So having that smaller, I can understand some people might not like that. But this outdoor area here, it is just gigantic. Like you can walk along here but, and the couch down the back here, it's massive. Like, <laughs> The room out here is just astonishing. It really is though, it's really spacious, hey bud? Yeah, it is. If you're somewhere where you can be outdoors and you want to be outdoors, this is great. Yeah. You guys are going to follow me down into the port hull. This boat has two cabins and two heads. The shower is actually separate from the bathroom. And it is huge down here. It's actually unbelievable. Come and have a look. So this is the bed. It looks like a queen size bed to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> And at the foot of the bed, it's storage, but I mean, you could fit, like I could sleep in there, probably. Actually, I'm gonna test it. Okay, I lie, I couldn't actually fit in here, but you could definitely put some kids in here. More storage here, cupboards. And this is the shower. And I love that the shower is separate from the toilet because a lot of boats have the shower going on top of the toilet. So when someone has a shower and the next person has to use the toilet and it's soaking wet, it's just gross. So I haven't actually been down this hole, so I'm excited to see. But there's a cabin and an office. Holy crap, this one is even bigger. I need this, I need this so bad. I'm so jealous, I really want this. I'm trying to work less though, so maybe I don't need the encouragement, but this is, this is really great. Where's the shower? Now this cabin seems a little bit bigger, but it can't be. More storage in there. I can see a little shower holder. And it's coming up. It's going up here. Oh yeah. Sorry, they're currently using this just as a sail locker, but there's also a pipe berth in here, so someone could sleep down here. And if the boat were to flip and you don't want to use this as an escape hatch, this over here, opens up to the bathroom mirror. 
Absolutely. in the other area. This is where we spend a lot of time hanging out in the saloon. One cool thing about this boat is there's a lot of sustainable materials. So they have cork flooring, huge fan of the cork, and they also have some bamboo wood. The incredible thing about this boat is, it's a very long story, but this boat actually flipped. They were really pushing it in a race. Yeah, the cork flooring was not replaced and it was submerged in salt water. Same with the carbon bench top. So, and I mean, the glass didn't shatter. It's a very strong, well-built boat. So this is the galley. <laughs> Microwave. It's a rubbish man. Really, we've got the stove top here. Got two induction stove tops. I found you only ever really need two. Two fridges over here, which we had to lock up to go sailing. There we go. <laughs> this is Mike's nav station, and that's a little different to your traditional cruising nav station. You can really tell this is this just feels racy. It's even got a mouse. That's when you know. <laughs> it's a rose boat. This saloon could easily see 10 people. You probably wouldn't get that many in here, but. Under here is the batteries. 300 amp hours, 24 volt batteries. And down here is some storage. There's a lot of room in here. I personally would probably keep a lot of like canned food for a big ocean passage. Tools, whatever you want, whatever you fancy. I also have to mention how awesome these windows are. Really like makes this whole area feel like one, having these windows. Yeah, you're so connected to the outside world and the inside world. Hey Riley, how are you? Good, love just sitting over here feeling connected. <laughs> So much connectivity. Oh, this boat has a heater and an air conditioner. Forgot to add that, but yeah. Heating and yeah. cooling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down into some probably non-traditional segments for metrics with which to measure a multi-hull buy. The first thing that most people would be interested in is the price. This vessel here is selling for 1.4 million. Can you just move a bit to the right? Yep, that's it, better. Yep, a bit that way. No, okay there, stand up. Normally I would be placing a lot of emphasis on the weight of the vessel. For this one, honestly, it's not as important because the weight gives me an indication as to how it will sail. It's just outstandingly quick. But, you know, for what it's worth, at 53 foot it weighs seven ton. Bad check, baby. <laughs> Hey, let me do it again. <laughs> that was good. That was a terrible dance. I love the vibe of this boat. It's very flowy. There's some woods in here. You don't get that like bright, sterile, modern boat vibes that are in a Ikea, lot of boats. Ikea, Ikea, Ikea. Feel. like I'm not getting Ikea vibes. It's like really well made. We've got the Polynesian bow. Yeah, the inspired bow. It's very bows. flowy. You're bringing the inside and outside. It is cool and clearly no one lives on it right now. So it needs a bit of jazzing up, like decorations, cushions, rugs, all of that. It's With very that, Fujin Shui, I would say. Yeah, this yeah, boat ergonomic. has potential to be like super, yeah. super funky. I'm, I'm giving it a 8 out of 10. I'm legit giving it for a vibe check because I think it is so <coughs> cool. I'm giving it a 10. That's a lot. Just about as good as you can get. That's three and a half meters to here. Oh, we've broken it. Have we? Yeah, I can't move. You need to put the camera down. Oh my god. I'm marking the spot. Okay, okay what's that? 0.75. So we're at 4.25. That's on the roof. Well done. That is... <laughs> 1.89. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some help? No. Not as good as me, are you? No, I'm not. 2.92. Interior volume. 23.45 meters. On Fujin, this is really where it happens. So we're probably doing a little bit of a disservice to the boat because this is probably twice as big as there. And this is where you're gonna be hanging out much more. More of an outdoor boat. Anyway, that's what it is. That's the number, 23.45. We couldn't give you a final review of the boat until we uh, spent at least a couple of days on it. So we're heading out now. We're heading to Mob Jack Bay. On board. I'm really excited just to be on anchor again. It's gonna be beautiful. Some parts of the Chesapeake are stunning and the weather's really 
heated up for us. Might even go for a swim. So we've obviously got Nils and Mike on board. Sometimes we're going to be able to take out boats ourselves. Other times, totally get it. This boat's for sale. The last thing the owner would want is for it to be totaled. And insurance is a nightmare. But luckily, Nils and Mike are great company. They're actually going to leave us to be on anchor by ourselves overnight and just come back tomorrow to move the boat again. Yeah, we're just motoring out a little bit further and then we're going to hoist one of these many sails. I think the spinnaker's going up today. We've got light wind. What we're doing at the moment is I've got the same reefing system as these guys do, the Carver reef hooks. It, it can take a little bit to learn, so they're just showing me like we're putting up reef one, reef two, and just going through doing a little bit of practice. What's happening inside here? I just made wraps for everyone and the kids are watching cartoons while I make wraps because they're jumping on the couch and the walls and wanting to go outside. So this is the only thing that keeps them. I can feel you apologising for having them on an iPad. I feel so guilty every time I put them on cartoons, but it's like having a babysitter. It's like, I get it. I get it, parents. It's fine. Don't be too hard on yourself like I am. We're just sailing under the A2 at the moment. We're doing 7.2 in 7.6. I'm doing it as instructed, just sailing up into the wind until the front edge of the sail curls in and then we'll speed up a bit and then I'll peel off. It's quite shallow here in the Chesapeake, so we're having to swap from wind instruments to chart plotter and back again. This is champagne sailing. These boats or further up? So just put the sails away. Darwin's sleeping. This is a beautiful little anchorage. Very tranquil. Hey Darwin! Okay, we're trying to shake off Darwin's jet lag by taking him for a joy ride. I could just do circles around this boat all morning just looking at soaking in all of the details. Love soaking in details. Hey, you're so cute. So we just came to pick up the guys, the crew. They stayed in this Airbnb overnight and this land is so beautiful. I guess that's the big house where the owners live. And then they have little guest houses and a playground and the cutest dog. I still want a dog, you guys, but that would be very, very bad of us. Whoa. That was pretty good. All right, take two. <laughs> Can you do that, Lenny? Go over. Charging, charging. Ready to release the power? Charging, charging. That's a big one. Charging. Hold on. <laughs> oh my God. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. It should be fun if you come to town with us, but. Wound up at a space center this evening. Kids are loving it. Keep going. Seven, Oops. six, yeah, five, we're still looking at it. four, Can three, I help you? two, one. Press launch. Yeah. Yeah. 
Australia? Yeah. When I look at those planets orbiting elliptically in a corkscrew throughout the universe and I, I think of cosmology yeah. and even physics and chemistry and biology, I find enough mystery and beauty and spirituality in all of that which has been scientifically proven and I think about the scientists that have just spent their entire lives trying to disprove each other and themselves and it just makes me pissed off with astrology and things of that nature. Oprah and, and that whole, just all, all of that. I love new age stuff that's cool or steeped in science. I, I think it's wicked and that's what I'm going to be teaching my boys. That's what I reckon. Stick with me some, for some more hot tips. Final thoughts on this vessel. I'll say that I would feel really comfortable and happy living on this vessel with my family. I feel like you don't need to be an absolute expert sailor to live aboard this boat. Maybe if you were inexperienced, you'd want a professional to come aboard and help you for a month or something, or not even, just to get your head around it. It's very achievable for most people, which is great. You don't have to fly at 20 knots. It's nice that it can go that fast. But what you want is to sail in the 10 knots of wind and be hooning. You're Pretty reading fantastic. straight from my playbook there. Oh, is that what you were going to say? We agree on a lot of things. Yeah, points. it's very nice, it's well made, it's beautiful. I would say, I'm sure that there's a couple out there that are thinking like, I could get something bigger or and the accommodation would be bigger and, and all that sort of stuff. And I would implore you what you can accomplish on this vessel. If you were to take two different boats around the world, one like a charter catamaran. Production, big, fat, heavy old thing. Or this one, you're gonna have so much more fun with the sailing component. And then when you arrive, people are gonna come to your boat and just be like, dude, what the what hell is, this? is that thing? We've already had people coming up and being like, what is this? And you get so many cool people and then like wicked sailors that just know their shit. And you find yourself sort of mixing in different crowds. It's a different community, both, yeah. Both are fun, but you really, really learn. And that's the thing. You get into um, the sailing the, as the, a sport and yep. lifestyle a bit more. Everything about it is awesome. That's that's just, I, if you're gonna spend four years sailing around the world please do it on this boat oh yeah Riley would like consider it reconsidered buying the right thing he's gonna do that with a lot of boats on this boat tour series I can tell no no I, I really <laughs> didn't but I was really happy to find out that the mocker rating on ineffable which is Rapido number one is identical to this one which means the crazy miles that they do on this boat 400 plus miles a day we'll be doing on that Rapido as well very very similar vessels in that regard this boat is for sale just a reminder links in the description below thank you so much for being here i hope you loved the episode if you did give it a thumbs up and join us next week for our next boat which spoiler alert is going to be one of the most fierce sailboats on the ocean today a gunboat if there's anything you want to know about gunboat in particular please drop your question in the comments below if you guys don't currently have any summer holidays plans I want to remind you of our vagabond adventures flotilla we're teaming up with navigare yachting in greece it's gonna be a full week of island hopping, exploring crystal blue water coves. It's a voyage for anyone. You can be old, you can be young, you can be experienced or not. It'll all be taken care of. There are currently a lot of boats booked out, but we do have one full 42 foot lagoon available, one full Sun Odyssey 519 monohull available, and some cabins still available on a bunch of cats. So if you wanna go and live out your Mamma Mia dream in Greece, I'll pop the link in the description box below, or you can email Jack directly if you have other questions. And that's not all. Just the week before that flotilla, from the 12th into the 19th, is our performance week on an Ultramar 4X, which is super speedy. Currently, you can still book out the entire boat or there's the option to book a cabin as well. So if you wanna go with your family or your friends, you can experience what it's like to sail really fast and go to some incredible spots in Greece. Personally, I wish I could make it to both, but it's been a bit chaotic with the kids lately. And we're about to launch our new trimaran. So um, yes, anyway, enjoy it all for me. Thank you, Jack and Edda and Navagare Yachting. Check out the links in the description.